Hello. Um, just trying out OBS. Um, I thought I would do a little review. Or not even really a review. Just a look at the Confidence versus McDonald uh, back and forth. Um, if you don't know Kevin McDonald, he wrote Culture of Critique, which argues that Jews pursue like a group evolutionary strategy um, through like cultural and political movements, mainly in the 20th century, but before and after too. And uh, Kaufnitz's main response is that the overrepresentation of Jews in like politics and culture, along with like science and literature and like even chess, is uh, just the default hypothesis, as he calls it, which is just that Jews have uh, a high IQ and are generally in high urban environments. So that just explains it, that they are involved in uh, movements that aren't explicitly anti-Jewish on the right or the left, whatever. As long as it's not explicitly like barring Jews, they'll probably be involved. So let's look. Um, this is his website, and he has like a little tab with uh, his debate with K Mac. Oh, what's yeah, Click on it. Um, yeah, so he has all his uh, back and forth with uh, McDonald's. Um, I guess Edward Dutton did a defense. And he responded, Edward Dutton is like this British dude who talks to Richard Spencer. I see a lot. I don't really know much about him. Um, I guess also J.F. Grapey um, did a defense of McDonald and uh, Kaufness responded. Um, J.F. was like a weird, creepy dude. Um, he did a blood sports with Andy Warsky on YouTube. But uh, I don't think he's like around much anymore. But yeah, he's like a creep. So anyway, let's go to... Yeah, Judaism is a group evolutionary strategy, critical analysis. This was his first uh, review in 2018. Um, I'm just going to like briefly go over like the main highlights. I'm not going to go too in-depth. Um, I just want to like, yeah, share the highlights. And um, people should just read it. It's not too long. And then you could read like some of the back and forth. Although there's a lot of it and it gets kind of boring and in the weeds. But just like knowing that there's like some refutations out there is like a good start. Um, so he's just like summarizing the main tenet or whatever argument and uh, should it be, um, does it merit scholarly attention? And he's just saying like, yeah, it's, even if it's a controversial idea, uh, it's still good to respond. Anyway, so this is where he describes the uh, default hypothesis. He gives an example of like Nobel laureates in chemistry, economics, physics, etc. cetera. Um, you know, how would you explain the high high proportion of Jews and Nobel laureates or like chess champions uh, based on the KMAC model. Because the KMAC model doesn't really, I mean, there's no, there's not, it's not clear to me that there's a group evolutionary strategy to be like good at physics or whatever. But yeah, Nobel laureates and like a bunch of stuff, uh, chess champions. Um, a lot of like the anti-Jewish right would say like they're cheating or whatever, but I mean, I'm just not going to go there because it's just like totally unfalsifiable and <clears throat> kind of dumb. Okay. And then he goes over some of the arguments he has. So whatever, like if a Gentile or a Jew is involved in a movement that KMAC thinks is like pursuing Jewish interests. Um, and usually KMAC's whole thing is like Jewish interests are basically just um, making the dominant culture, like not as, uh, unified and not as like yeah unified around like culture or race or religion or whatever um, so it's kind of broad and he just he it's the thing of like oh he views that uh, if Jews like make a multicultural society where everyone's just like kind of this chill person who doesn't have like a strong interest in anything like too uh, racial or religious it's like good for the Jews because the Jews don't have to worry about like super like you know ethnic extremists or religious extremists or whatever um but he gives the example of john dewey and carl young as like gentiles who read or led radical movements and that kmac would just say like oh these gentiles were like under the influence of jews they're like recruited um in jewish dominated areas but it just it's just another unfalsifiable thing where gentiles do something and it's like oh well they're just a puppet of the jews and then when jews do something like oh they're obviously like have this either conscious or unconscious, like, um, I don't know how else to describe it, like agency to pursue this evolutionary strategy. 
Um, yeah, Jewish involvement in anti-Jewish activism. So KMAC's big thing, or one of his big things, is uh, broad Jewish consensus on issues such as Israel. Um, he like, so it's funny he uses Israel because he'll say if a Jew is anti-Israel, it means he's like that that Jew is trying to uh, promote Jewish interests in the long run. Uh, is something he says, and it's just kind of like stupid because his basic premise is like, oh, the Jews support Israel, but if they don't, oh, they're still really you know, pursuing Jewish interests. So, um, it kind of, it makes me think like anything a Jew does that isn't like killing themselves is like in Jewish interests. Like a Jew drinking water is, you know, in Jewish interests. It's just kind of stupid. Um, it's, it's, you know, the whole thing is, it doesn't like really need to be said. It's a lot of it's just like, uh, I don't even know. Um, but yeah, so like people like Chomsky and, um, well, it's George Soros. They're not exactly like Jewish nationalists. Like who support Israel. If anything, they're like, <clears throat> anti-Israel. Um, Karl Marx as well, like, super not, like, the least Jewish Jew, because he, I mean, his parents converted to Christianity, he was raised Christian, and also he, like, wrote on the Jewish question, he thought Judaism as, like, a, like, as a identifying people would have, would disappear when communism took over. Like, there'd be no more need for Judaism. As he put it, like, Judaism was a religion of huckstering and, like, capitalism, so, it would just go away once capitalism was destroyed. Um, okay, this is a funny one. Uh, the failure of Jews to support overtly anti-Semitic movements um, is interpreted as, as evidence of extreme Jewish ethnocentrism. Uh, on page 80 of k Mag's book, Culture Critique, he writes, Even if nationalist movements are anti-Semitic, as has often been the case, anti-Semitism should be irrelevant if these individuals are indeed completely de-ethnicized. So that's like really dumb because a anti-Semitic nationalist movement, they don't care how the Jewish person feels. They don't like him as a Jew. Like it doesn't matter if the Jew is like not, uh, doesn't claim to be a Jew or whatever. Like all these movements, like obviously like the Nazis and there was other people before them, um, even to the president, like the alt-right. If like someone has a Jewish last name, like they're persona, persona non grata, like they're not allowed in. Um, so it's just kind of like a stupid thing. Like, it doesn't matter what the Jew wants or doesn't want in that situation anyway. Like, they're not going to... They can't join an anti-Semitic movement. And also, like, why would they... Even if it's not a matter of uh, do they feel like an ethnic pride or an ethnic uh, attachment. It's just, like, for their personal interest and safety, they're not going to join, like, a murderous anti-Jewish club or something. Like, that's just dumb. Um <clears throat> I'm not going to go over that too much. Um, just doing the broad strokes here, folks. Um, yeah, Gentile radicalism is ignored. Um, he talks about, like, Rousseau, social gospel movement. Um, yeah, there was definitely, like, radical socialists and, like, proto-communists before Marx, for sure. Um, I know in the, uh, the intro, McDonald says that America was, like, not... <clears throat> this uh, culture and society that like focused on class divisions. And that was only like brought about by like radical Jewish people. Um, but that's totally not the case. There was definitely like um, socialists and stuff like before Marx. And there was, you know, like major strikes and stuff like before, like the radical Jews from Eastern Europe came like, I mean, it's, you know, ridiculous. Um, he talks about Boaz and I mean, McDonald says that like Boaz was, the like main defeater of the Darwinistic uh, like geneticist view of culture and race. And that Boaz kind of introduced like cultural relativism and like an anti-Western, like pro, uh, I guess like whatever, like noble savage type of idea. I'm not like too familiar with Boaz. Um, but as confidence points out, Rousseau was a popularizer, popularizer of the noble savage theory. Um, in Europe, like kind of idealizing uh, non civilizational peoples, I guess, like in like the New World and stuff, um, or on like random like remote islands, like people just like lived happier lives they thought because they didn't have all the ills of modern society, uh, you know, their modern society, whatever. Um, also, he talks about how there was like a decent amount of Gentiles who were a part of the Boazian school of anthropology, like Margaret Mead, Ruth Benedict. Um, K-Mac would just say, like, oh, they're just, like, 
either recruited or like used by the Jews. Or I guess you could even say like, oh, well, they're still like under, like they're still like, you know, using a Jewish uh, methodology or whatever. But I mean, they have no reason to like pursue, like they're Gentiles, like according to the theory, what they have no reason in, for pursuing like some Jewish group evolutionary strategy. Keep on going. Oh, and then also uh, some major geneticists, like people who look at race and IQ and stuff, were Jewish, like uh, Richard Herrnstein. Uh, he co-wrote with uh, Charles Murray, I think his name was, uh, The Bell Curve, and some other people. Um, I didn't know Jensen. I remember, uh, yeah, Arthur Jensen. I remember uh, Jared Taylor would bring him up a lot. I guess he's like a quarter Jewish or whatever. And, I mean, they always bring up quarter Jews as Jewish, so whatever. But uh, And some other guy was like half Jewish. So there's that, uh, the influence of Freud, uh, specifically on some of like the top American intellectuals and like some of the top American intellectuals were Jewish, like, a, you know, like I think, a, yeah, I guess according to this, like the majority were Jewish, um, in the 1970s. Again, I think the default hypothesis would explain that, that just a high IQ and being in urban centers. Um, but even among those Jews, like they all had different interests and like, Again, most were either neutral or anti-Israel, which goes back to like Israel being a big issue for Jews. Um, so there's that. Just broad strokes here. Let's see, keep going, man. Okay, Frankfurt School. I'm gonna pause here. Uh, Frankfurt School is kind of a similar thing, that they were kind of anti-nationalistic, but they were also anti-nationalistic for Jews. So basically, there's no like evidence that people from the Frankfurt School, like, uh, were supportive of Israel and like, you know, nationalism for me, not for the that wasn't really the case. Um, and then there's some stuff down here about like the Frankfurt School being like anti-Christian, which is like anti, uh, you know, that's being like anti the unifying thing behind like Western civilization. But it's like more uh, complicated than that. You can read about that. Um, and that actually some aspects of Christianity, the paper school like appreciated. So it's not like this, like black and white thing. Okay. Yeah. Communism. So Marx and LaSalle, um, I mean, didn't really like identify much as Jews and, uh, were like said like anti-Semitic shit. Um, what else? Uh, McDonald brings up the book. Um, uh, McDonald brings up Schatz's book, Rise and Fall of the Generation of Jewish Communists in Poland, I think it's called. Um, and talks about like the overrepresentation in the Jewish communist government and the police. But Kaufness talks about how that's not really like a Jewish like clique that's like anti Gentile, like pro Jewish, because the Jews in the uh, secret police like target disproportionately Jews, like 40% of the Jewish people, they target, or 40% of the people, yeah, of the victims of the secret police were Jewish. Um, so it just, that's like a, if it's the case that they're like trying to pursue this like strategy to get into power or whatever, I mean, it doesn't really make sense that they target Jews. But what does make sense is that if Jews were like super urbanized and like into, like had roles in the government because of like, just education and stuff, then that would make the most sense of that. Um, and then it goes on to talk about, so yeah, it goes into diversity, immigration. Uh, McDonald brings up the 65 act. I did a whole video on immigration. Uh, most people would say that like Ken the Kennedys were like the main pursuers of that. Um, not just like Emmanuel Seller or whatever, like Jewish groups. Um, yeah, this is an interesting idea that Jews uh, were against, like, the ideas of Grant, um, the guy who wrote uh, Passing of the Great Race or whatever. Um, I mentioned uh, this guy in my video, but his whole thing was Nordic superiority. So he was not this guy who, like, believed in, like, the white race, like, necessarily. He believed in the Nordic race. So he was anti-Italian and anti-Irish, which, I mean, McDonald is from an Irish Catholic background, unless he's, like... A Protestant Irish person, but I'm just assuming he's Catholic Irish. Um, and I don't think he has like a Catholic Irish 
group evolutionary strategy to like divert attention from the role of the Catholic Church in immigration, but that's another story. Um, but being against the idea of like Nordic suprem- like superiority isn't like that's not anti-white or anything. If anything, that's pro-white, white like promoting white unity uh, in a sense. Just like the Melting Pot by Zangwill, that was all about like different European peoples coming together and becoming like American. Um, that's like where white comes from, the notion of white. You can almost, yeah, you can almost say that what notion of whiteness, like, in a sense, came from a Jewish playwright, like, <laughs> in a sense, um, which is problematic to some people. Um, okay, so going on, um, they always bring up, like, this double standard with Israel, but Israel is, like, the dumbest example to bring up because Israel is, like, super ethnically diverse. Not only is like 20% of the population Arab, but the Jews there are like of totally different ethnic backgrounds. Like obviously there's Ethiopian Jews, um, which uh, the Ethiopian Jewish community was brought over. Like uh, a lot of liberal American Jews supported that. Um, And like half the Jews in Israel are like Arab, Mizrahi Jews. So it's kind of like different. I mean, it's not quite the same because Judaism is a, ethno religion in a sense, even though you can convert and whatever. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of like saying like if there was like different ethnic groups of Christianity or within Christianity moving to a country, I mean, they're still different. I mean, even if they have the same religion and maybe like, even if they have the same, I don't know. It doesn't, it's, it's hard to translate over, but it's just not the case that Israel is just like, uh, you know, extremely nationalistic, like, uh, ethno state, uh, like homogenous ethno state. I mean, it's anything but that really, there's like a lot of diversity there actually. Um, do, do, do. Yeah. So talks about the Ethiopians and yeah. So at the end he just says that the evidence favors a default hypothesis. Um, I think that's like pretty, accurate i mean i don't see how like the default hypothesis it's occam's razor it just makes the most sense that uh, jews are gonna go and get involved in like numerous fields as long as the field doesn't like bar them for being jews um okay so i'm gonna pause there but just moving on there's another article he wrote uh the anti-jewish narrative um in 2021 or it was released then um, it's a bit easier to read, so you might want to like look at that. It's like smaller. That goes over some stuff. Uh, this is KMAX response, and uh, all the highlighted things are like comments that Kopitz made. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna go like over every one, but I just think it's like it's definitely a good read if you uh, are someone who is like intimidated by this kind of stuff. Like, if you just read it and like. It, you know, you have to do work. You have to do the reading. But if you just read it, you realize, like, it's kind of just up in the air and it's not necessarily the best, like, reasoning all the time. I mean, every, you know, every subject that has stuff written on it, like, if you, if you know enough knowledge to, like, write a book on something and have some footnotes and you're, like, a person who's gone through some education, like, you're going to have some things right. And, like, it's not like a that hard to notice like Jewish overrepresentation in certain things. But um, just the way he goes about it is like, I think he just goes like a, a roundabout way to tackle the situation when um, I do think the default hypothesis works for most of it. And K max whole thing is it's really unfalsifiable. There's a uh, certain like, um, like here, I think he probably need to control F uh, intermarriage. Yeah. So KMAX original, uh, I guess you say prediction in his book is that Jewish intermarriage um, would decrease or like Jews would only marry other Jews and that would increase while the rest of the population, like, you know, how like he would say like, oh, Jews are like trying to get other people to intermarry, but not themselves. That was like totally not the case. Jews like are notoriously known for or are notorious for like intermarrying, especially reformed Jews. Um, so they talk about that here. I know like Dutton 
and some other people talked about like oh if you're if you're um because jews are such a low percentage of the population the fact that they like aren't don't totally marry out like within a generation is proof that they uh are like selecting other jews to marry or whatever but i mean that's just based on like where they live and like certain like cultural background and like they again it's just like if you're in new york like what like 10 percent of the population is jewish and like i mean jews aren't going to marry people from like a different immigrant background who like don't even know the language or culture that's just like a thing so but i mean jews intermarry more than like any other religious group but and i think there's something missing on both sides is that um culture and religion especially is the driving force of like a lot of stuff and so if you're a religious jew <clears throat> you're gonna vote like republican you're gonna like value jewish tradition and laws and stuff and you're definitely gonna marry jewish but if you're a reform or just like secular jew like you're not gonna care you're gonna vote democrat and you're gonna you know marry whoever um it's the same with any other religious group, if you're a religious, like pious Muslim or Catholic or Presbyterian, you're going to marry within those traditions and raise your kids as such. But if you're like liberal or, you know, you don't care that much, like you're going to marry out. And it, yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, the, a big thing that I think should be looked at is, um, you know, all the Jews who were involved in like these, uh, political movements and whatnot, like most, like the vast majority are secular Jews. So that's like a big thing Like no religious Jews gets really involved in politics too much. I mean, there's like Ben Shapiro, like who else? I don't know. So, um, I'm not sure what else I had to say. Not much. That's probably it. Uh, I probably could have done a better job at this, but I just wanted to try out OBS and like just show that there's, um, um, pause that. Yeah, I just wanted to show that there's like uh, responses to some culture critique stuff and I'm going to do a video on the secret police. I still need to get some books in and then I'm going to do, um, I'm definitely going to review and like, I think go chapter by chapter through K Max book because uh, it's good to do that. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. So see you around.